Today I'm going to show you how to use elimination to solve a system of equations. I'm going to give you three problems and then I'm going to let you practice. Elimination is just what it sounds like. You want to eliminate a variable. And in order to solve using elimination, you need to have at least one pair of variables that are opposites. And you only really want one pair of variables to be opposites. Because if you do have both pairs opposites, um, you'll see what happens in number three. You'll see how, what works there. Okay, so let's look at number one. Uh, we have negative 6x in one equation and positive 6x in the other. Those two are opposites. So that's what I mean. In one equation, you want it to have an inverse with something in the other equation. Um, negative 4y and positive 2y are fine because as long as my x's are eliminated, I want to solve for my y's. Okay, let's do it. So negative 6 plus 6 is 0. Just like when we were young, we were adding, we just put a line, so we're really doing that. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2y, and negative 10 plus 8 is negative 2. But we're solving for y, so what do we need to do now? Yes, divide both sides by negative 2, because that's multiplication, so we have to do the inverse operation of division. And we get y is equal to 1. Are we finished? No, because we have two lines, and the solution is where the two lines cross, if there is a solution. And so we need an ordered pair to represent that. So we just found the y-coordinate of our ordered pair. How do we find the x-coordinate? Good. You take your 1, plug it into one of your equations. It doesn't even matter which one. It's totally up to you. We'll use the first one. Negative 6x minus 4y equals negative 10. In place of y, we're going to put 1. So negative 6x minus 4 times 1 is equal to negative 10. And then we have to solve for x. We have negative 6x minus 4 is equal to negative 10. I think I might want to move that down a little bit. Let me just use my hands to erase. So we already know that our y is 1. Um, the inverse of subtraction is addition, so we're going to add 4 to both sides of our equation. Now we have negative 6x is equal to negative 6. And what's your last move? Right, divide both sides of your equation by negative 6. And it looks like x is equal to 1. So we're saying that both x and y are 1. Remember I told you it's a good idea to check yourself. So negative 6 times 1 is negative 6. And negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Negative 6 minus 4 is negative 10. Then we can plug in this one. 6 times 1, because 1 is x, is 6. And 2 times 1, because y is 1. So we have 6 plus 2, because 2 times 1 is 2. And we get 8. So we know that these two lines will cross as the ordered pair 1-1. One, one. Look at number 2 and see what you think you should do. If you want, you can go ahead and pause and do number 2 on your own and then check yourself. So what you do, yes, put your line. See, you already have inverses, which is why we went ahead and put our line. We have 3 plus 1, which is 4x. The 5's cancel because you have positive 5 minus 5. 2 plus 6 is 8. And how do you solve? Good. Divide both sides by 4. And we get x is equal to 2. Are you done? Nope. That's right. So we have x equals 2. We have to find y. How do you find y? Good. You plug that 2 into one of your equations for x. I think we're going to choose the first one. You can choose either one. So x plus 5y is equal to 2. But we know x is 2. So now you want to solve. You want to undo that positive 2 by subtracting 2, because 2 minus 2 is 0. Balance your equation. You have to do it to both sides of your equation. 2 minus 2 is 0. Undo your multiplication by division. So we divide by 5. And 0 divided by 5 is 0. So we're saying our solution is 2, 0. So then I'll show you one. I'll, have, I'll show you one where we're plugging because we've been talking about it. So I'm using my first equation. I'm saying x is 2 and y is 0. That cancels out. 2 does equal 2. So I know that it works for my first equation. 
Now I'm going to plug in x and y into my second equation to see if it works. So, I guess I can do it right here. We have 3x minus 5y equals 6, but we said x is 2, and we said y is 0. 3 times 2 is 6, that goes away. 6 does equal 6, so we know that's right. So that means that we got the correct answer, because it works when we plug in our x and y. Remember, if I give you an x and y, and I don't show you any of this work, but I give you two equations, and I say, is this ordered pair or this point a solution to that system, you would do exactly what I just did here. Plug in for x, plug in for y. If you get a true statement at the end of both equations, then you know that it is a solution, which means that is the point where those lines cross. Now let's go to this third problem. In our third problem, it looks like we definitely have opposites in one equation and the other. So the threes cancel out and go to zero. The twos cancel out and go to zero. Seven plus seven is 14. Zero plus zero is zero. Is zero equal to 14? No, it's not. You're right. That's a false statement. So for this, there is no solution. No matter what you plug in for x and y, you will never get 7. Um, if you checked out the, if you solve for y, or you look at the slope of these lines, you'll find out they both have the same slope. And because they both have the same slope, what type of lines are they? Right, we find out these are parallel lines, and parallel lines have no solution y. Right, they never cross. So there, there, there's a possibility that you will get an answer that's no solution, just so you know that can happen, because you may have parallel lines. So now you're ready to practice. You can let me know if you need any help, or you can let Mr. Long know, or you can let Mr. Jones know. Okay, thank you.